I hope I spelled that right. That's what is what? Great informational. Am I slow? Cold days, blown with a stone face. Rose drip to the bone and going his own way. Loaded on the trip to the cold and it's gone pay. A familiar woody smell fills the room and drifts out of your window. For the bus stop, boys. You blink, we steady yourself, go. inhale deeply, and fill your lungs up with warmth. But what happens next? Chemically speaking, biologically speaking, what is it about Brother, this little no green plant cap. that gets millions of people around you. the world to flock to it? How long has humanity been consuming it? And what exactly is it? That's a great question. I'm not gonna lie, I always wanted to know that. When did people start smoking weed? It's been around as long as I've been alive. And before that, bro, they were doing that in the 60s. Why are you watching what happens when you have Seth? Because I just want to know what happens, you feel me? Doing inside Who knows, your body, bro? inside I, your I mind. I mean, start, let's on the goo. The I want to figure out what happens. And itself rolled up in a joint in your hand. Native to Central and South Asia, the can Native to South Asia? Cannabis plant today is so popular, it's now grown to be a global economy of its own. From small scale rural farming operations all the way through to drug super labs, including any number of illegal weed farms somewhere in the middle. Experts believe that there are well over 700 different strains of cannabis currently on the market. And this number. Yo, hear me out. Hear, hear me out, chat. Hear me out. Hear me out. The Bus Stop Boys do a stream where we try all 700 stream. My fault. All 700 strands. Hear me out, Joe. You got to think on the vision I'm thinking on, bro. The Bus Stop Boys try over all of 700 different strands. Come on, tell me that's not a fire video idea. We feeing? I'm feeing. I make that call. <laughs> Get that thing done. I make that call. Hey, y'all like the do rag though? It is a do rag stream, you feel me? I was tired of having the hair all in my face. seems only set to increase being able to identify which strain of weed you have in your hand can be God, very that's easy od but that would be so gas that would be, state where nope. marijuana nobody's doing that film on oh, god nobody's doing that we need all straight honey strands your lung is gonna give out like the towers sid you can't say that film yo you can't say that <laughs> You can't say that, fam. That's crazy. Yo, he's Sid is wildin', bro. Somebody check on Sid. That boy wildin', bro. You can't say that. We need all 700 strands. Nobody doing that, though. That's that's my whole point. We'll be killing it with that, bro. It's that's great content. Being able to verify exactly what it is you're smoking becomes more difficult. Looking down at the green mossy balls in your hand, do you know where in the world it's come from and what's inside it? Let's break it down a bit, or rather, grind it down. You've likely heard of the two most well-known active Grinding? ingredients in cannabis. These are cannabidiol and tetrahydrocannabinol, or as you probably THC. know them, CBD and THC. Over the last 10 years in the West in particular, CBD has been championed as a potential medical breakthrough. It's also been shown to have a calming effect on those with anxious disorders and is currently being tested as a treatment for psychosis, sleep disorder, Make it illegal, make it legal, not illegal. Make it legal everywhere. Simply, I'm telling you, like they just, they just saying it right there. Make it illegal everywhere. Simply on God. That's all you got to do. Orders, muscle spasticity and more. You might've seen ads for CBD oil products popping up in your feed, claiming that it can solve any number of ailments. Research is ongoing. However, results vary. In the case of curing cancer, for example, so far there's no evidence to support that CBD has any kind of effect on the disease. Who on earth despite said what it people cured on cancer? the internet might be saying. So, somebody you smoke said it's CBD cured cancer, high, right? No, CBD is usually extracted as an oil, and on its own, it will not get you high. But it's still psychoactive, meaning it alters your mental state, typically leaving you feeling more calm and mellow. The feeling of being high comes from the main active component that in THC. marijuana. THC. THC. Typically found in much greater quantities than CBD, my fault, my THC fault, fault, can have a powerful psychoactive effect. To see what that means in practice, let's follow it as it enters the human body. 
you take in a deep breath of that joint and let the smoke fill your lungs. In this example- Hey, speaking of smoking, Joe, when the next bus stop, fam? I'm trying to bust. I'm gonna be real. I'm trying to bust. I'm trying to, I'm trying to bust stop. I'm trying to bust. Whoa, whoa. Let me put a pause on that because somebody who's not in our inner circle, that sounds crazy. Bro, off the damn Jew, man. Low key, low key. Oh God, low key. But, 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 I still want a bus. No cap. You know I need a bus. Let me know. Come on. Well, you're gonna hey. be a test subject. I'm gonna have to put in that group chat. Weed. See what the boys. Smoking on. is one of the most direct and quickest ways to get high. This is because the smoke from your burning marijuana contains high levels of THC. The smoke is then inhaled, filling your lungs. At this point you might experience some irritation manifesting in the iconic smoker's cough from introducing I know a lot about that. substance into your lungs. This, however, is not unique to smoking weed, as you're likely to see the same from people smoking or vaping conventional tobacco. The lungs are designed to quickly and efficiently transfer oxygen into the bloodstream they don't when need we smoke. breathe. Therefore, they have the capacity to take in large quantities of gas in one breath and get any number of elements or compounds from that gas into our bloodstream and fast. The lungs aren't just empty chambers. They're full of tiny little air pockets called alveoli. The average human adult has roughly 480 know. million alveoli in their lungs, constituting about 1,500 miles Serious of Serious combustion. That's the equivalent of driving from Miami to New Hampshire for our- Hold on, 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 hold on. I know y'all seen that. I know y'all seen that. Oh my God. Oh my God, we getting big. Oh. My fault sidetrack viewers or madrid to copenhagen for our european viewers for everyone else it's roughly 13 million six hundred thirty-six thousand three hundred sixty-three point six bananas lying end to end sidetrack anyway, back phone. to your lungs in each alveolus the thc from the smoke is transferred directly into your bloodstream which then carries they it all over your body ass. including to the critical area your brain as a result, it often only takes a matter of seconds. Yo, where was the stream to today at, man? I was waiting on it at work too, bro. Where was your stream at, fam? Effects of what they're smoking. So let's crack your head open and see what's going on inside. Sorry, this might hurt a little. The THC and CBD bind themselves to receptors throughout your brain. The amygdala, for example, is responsible for anxiety, emotional responses, and fear. CBD dulls the activity in this part of the brain, but the THC component can stimulate it. While many users feel calmer after having smoked weed, fault, others man. can you feel go. a heightened sense of paranoia and worry, particularly on the come down as the calming effects of the CBD wear off. Looking at other parts of the brain impacted by the CBD, we have the basal ganglia. You know what's crazy? I've never experienced that and I hope I never do. When you get anxious, like I know people who smoke and they get anxious. I've never experienced anything like that. And I swear to God, I pray I don't. I've greened out before, but I've never experienced where I'm like panicking, or like disoriented or anything. I've never experienced that and I never want to. No cap. Which is involved with motor control and planning. The neocortex, which processes sensory information and the cerebellum, which is the center of motor control. All three of these areas are impacted by smoking weed, resulting in you feeling slower in general. Reflexes are delayed, information takes more time to process, and motor functions and speed <laughs> That's slow the down. biggest fact. Driving under the influence of marijuana can be very dangerous as a result. One study in the UK found that fatal accidents are 1.65 times to more like hospital. Like, see, that's OD. One God, that's OD. I never, I don't want to experience that. I've never had, and I, I pray to God I never will. No cap. Likely to occur when the subject is under the influence of marijuana. While another study in Canada found that accidents could be to four times I'm a big as likely. Back. Most countries have strict laws for driving under the influence of weed with zero tolerance policies made stricter by the fact that he can take over. Hold on. You can't this has got weed. What the hey? That's news to me, buddy. 48 hours for weed to stop showing I'm up dumb. on a blood test. I'm, if they're mind. testing Ignore your saliva, that. it can be up to 72 hours. Urine can be anywhere from three to 30 days, and it can even be tested in your hair follicles for up to 90 days. That's crazy. Fortunately, you won't find many traffic cops that are plucking out your arm hair for a routine traffic stop. However, it would be reductive to think that all weed does is dull your brain. THC is a very active component that stimulates a lot of neural activity. Colors look brighter, sounds are louder, music sounds more rich and layered. Oh my God, the music part is the biggest spit ever, fam. 
Y'all gotta smoke and listen to the Rodeo album by Travis Scott. I swear to God, it's a masterpiece. On my soul, it's a masterpiece. You, bro. Oh my God. I don't even know how to explain that. The music part is the factest thing ever, bro. Food often tastes better under the influence of THC, giving the subject the illusion that they're really hungry. That's right. This is why so many people using cannabis experience the famous munchies, I which is why munchies. having a stoner visit your home is potentially extremely dangerous to the state of your snack pantry and chip supply. Saying many dangerous is a crazy word to use. Being able to think outside the box or come up with fresh and exciting ideas. Artists all throughout history have partaken in recreational drugs in an attempt to broaden their horizons, dulling a lot of the negative sensations, such as feeling pain and anxiety coupled with the stimulation from THC results in feelings of euphoria. In short, you, our human test subject, have gotten high. But what does this high actually look like? Here's where it gets really Brother, interesting. when I started, Let's the goo music was insane. That shit would travel through my brain. <laughs> no cap though, bro. No cap, bro. I swear to God, music sounds like a million times better, bro. A million times. Yo, yo. Joe, I just thought of a great, a crazy idea. Is that why Bob Ross is gone? Yo, that's a great question, Sid. No, no bet, fam. No cap. Joe, a good music stream, me and you, we making a song on stream while good. Tell me that's not insane. I feel like that's a great, that's W, bro. That's W. That's W content. On oh, God, that is. We gotta make lifted part two. Come on, bro. Sid, bro. Sid literally just said we gotta put lifted on Spotify, bro. Come on, Bandage lifted part two on the way. Take a look. So far, we've only focused on the THC and CBD, but there are hundreds of active components within cannabis, which vary in quantity you, and intensity you feel me, Bimmy? depending on which of the hundreds of strains the user is consuming. On top of that, there's the method of consumption. While smoking or vaping gets the chemicals into the bloodstream quickly, the high only lasts around three hours or so. Many users instead take gummies or bake brownies and cookies. When weed is absorbed through the digestive system, it takes a significantly longer time to kick in. But when it does, the, the user can experience <laughs> hard, highs that go I'll on for hours, <laughs> even up to a day. I'm not gonna lie. I'm shy too, bro. I'm gonna be real. I'm shy as hell too. And that's on my soul. I am shy too, bro. Bro, the my method of making music is so trash, bro. Like, I don't even know how that would work on stream. I'm not gonna lie. It takes me like 30 minutes to come up with one line sometimes, man. I literally listen to the beat over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, bro. Hey, no as the digestive system slowly releases the chemicals into the bloodstream. All of this makes studying the effects of marijuana very difficult. As with almost any study, there are the caveats of which strain is being used, how the test subject is ingesting it, and who the test subject is. The human brain is an incredibly complex you thing gotta vibe out. If you took a I sample of the human brain that was the size of just one grain of sand, that sample would contain 100,000 neurons your mind, it's not one gonna matter. synapses. No cap though. Sid, that's a spit. Yo, Joe, Sid just spit. Or oh, God, he just spit. It's not going to matter. We're going to be too locked in on the music. We're not even going to pay attention to the camera right here. Hi. We're not going to be paying attention to that. It's going to be cold days, blown with a stone. Like, you feel me? We're going to be locked in. I dare want to do some shit like that and make a song. Yo, Bim, I made a song with all of my friends, bro. Let's hop on a song. I made a song with Quez, too, fam. Hey, Bim on the track would go hard. You feel me, Bim? Come on. Hey, twins, let's lock in, bro. Let's lock in. No cap. Now multiply that Hit by me up. 860,000, and you've got a human brain, just like the one that's sitting in your head, watching this video and feeling very smug about itself. Being able to quantify and measure exactly what's happening in an organ far more advanced I'm and down complicated with it. than the computers were studying. Hey, it on you go has find a beat you like and send it to me. I feel like I'm. Continue. Hold on. I feel like I'm confident to rap on any beat. I'm not gonna lie. Have you heard my um? We go play it after this video. Have you heard my um? My like alternative song I made. It's the quality kind of bad, but I low key think that's one of my favorite songs I've made so far. I'll play it after this, no cap. I want your opinion time. on it. While one individual might take one puff and spend the rest of the day feeling anxious, their elderly grandma might smoke a whole bowl and feel nothing but zen. So 
What granny know about a bowl? Come on, Joe. What she know about a bowl? She don't know nothing about no bowl, man. The one Kobe be playing. Um, that's a different one. That I like that song too, but that's a different one. For Nana's sake, is it dangerous? Well, on the whole, consuming marijuana is relatively harmless as long as you aren't dry. Is it dangerous? Let's well, play that back the for whole, the people in the back. Consuming marijuana is relatively harmless. So, for Nana's sake, what did she say? Is it dangerous? Well, on the whole, consuming marijuana is relatively harmless. Make it legal, please. Please make it legal. That one hard. Yo, appreciate it, Twin. That one is um sober mind. Sober mind. I was in a different space when I made that. That's crazy. As long as you aren't driving, controlling heavy machinery, or performing open heart surgery, the risks of smoking the occasional joint with the right amount of weed in it are low. So why hasn't it been legalized worldwide already? Please. And why are there skeptics out there, including in the scientific community? As is often the case with controversial topics, a lot of the you smoked with your brother's girlfriend's grandma, fam. That sounds vibey as hey, yo. That's gas, bro. That is gas. Conflict comes. I wish I could do something like that, bro. Differences. To tell that whole story, we need to. I don't think nobody in my family smoked before, besides me, or my cousins. But like, cousins ain't gonna hit the same as like. Like somebody grandma, you feel me? Wind all the way back to China in 2800 BC, where we find the first recorded use of marijuana in history. Even that long ago, the KC, where we find the first. Re She's so chill. It's W. That's that's W is hey, bro. The first recorded use of marijuana was in 2800 BC. What the hey? They were getting good in the before Christ, bruh. Yo, 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 that's crazy. Recorded use of why is it not legal? History. Once Even again, long ago, the cannabis plant was being used for medicinal purposes. Emperor Shen Nong, considered by many to be the grandfather of medicine, recorded the plant in his writings as being particularly useful. From that point, records of cannabis spread throughout India, Syria, Greece, and Rome. Various healing properties have been ascribed to it over the years, including cures for inflammation, crazy. depression, arthritis, and even asthma. Of course, most early medicine is new. <laughs> Yo, Vim, what did you say? Oh, fuck. I know niggas in high school that would pass the blunt with their dad. Shit was... Yo. Auto mod is tweaking. I got you, Gango. That's crazy. Automod is going crazy. It's getting you packed, man. <laughs> it's trying to get you gone. Notoriously rather unreliable. We're looking at you leeches and milk transfusions, but there's always been something about this little green plant that's captured the attention of doctors and pharmacologists throughout the centuries. They've been Often smoking forever, man. Of truth to the mythology that has sprung up around the drug. In Hinduism, for example, the god Shiva is given the title of Lord of Bong because cannabis is his favorite food. For centuries, many Hindus believed that if you were suffering from a fever, it was the god's hot breath of anger upon you. Rituals were conducted where you would be given a quantity of cannabis to consume, so you would find favor with Shiva again, and your fever would pass. With modern medical science, we know that THC acts... No, they dead the hippo been like off the goo for like centuries. They've been off the goo forever, since the beginning of time, basically, bro. That's so hard. Thalamus of the brain reducing the body's temperature and therefore counteracting fevers. So where did it all go wrong for Weed's PR team? Why is it that many people in the West now include cannabis in the same conversation as crack, cocaine, and heroin? Which is crazy! Penicillin. Well, medical marijuana was first introduced in the West in 1841 by William Brooke O'Shaughnessy, an Irish physician who spent years studying all kinds of different medicines in India. But the real origins of the USA's problem with marijuana began 200 years before that, in the Jamestown colony in 1605. Dissatisfied with the return on investment they were seeing, the English, and King James I in particular, demanded the colony change up the crop they produced to hemp, a plant within the cannabis family. The crop was a massive success and became the key to the early expansion of the American colonial settlements. What the George hey? Washington himself famously grew make that be illegal. as one Please of his make primary illegal. crops on Mount Vernon. The plant was used to manufacture ropes and fabrics, but following William Brooke O'Shaughnessy's findings from India, Americans began to experiment with the plant's medicinal properties. So he'd been the sipping USA on that thing. In relative infancy, with many laws and prohibitions being established, 
Drug laws at the time involved labeling products as being poisons, which restricted them to being legal only if prescribed by a pharmacist. If poison? Like, what are we talking about, bro? The goo is not poison, fam. Alcohol is poison. And that's legal, by the way. And then the debate about cannabis varied from state to state, with some issuing it with the poison status and others believing it was exempt from these rules. At the time, opium dens were rife across America, and alongside them, a number of hashish parlors Boy, popped up in which people it. would the smoke various forms of hemp and cannabis. By 1880, these establishments were seen as quite fashionable, with many of the upper classes frequenting them. Yo, it's estimated that they're- My fault for pausing so much, they dead used to smoke in buildings. Do you think how, think about how crazy that is. You imagine walking to a building and it's just full of goo, like goo smoke. That's insane. They used to just smoke in buildings, hot box in buildings and stuff. Not even just goo smoke. They used to smoke cigarettes in buildings too. That's insane to me. Fire hazard, freaking, you ain't breathing nothing but freaking nicotine smoke. Like, bruh, that's insane. Opium? There were roughly Opium? such parlors in New York City alone. The laws needed to be strengthened further still. Fraud and corruption were rife in the drug industry, with many falsely labeling their products for the sake of profit. The tighter that these restrictions got, the more people looked for loopholes. The government and the newly established Food and Drug Administration were pulling in different directions than a lot of the American public, who were looking to skirt prescriptions and drug laws in order to continue to get their highs. In the move to close the loopholes, cannabis was often grouped in with many of the much more addictive, much more harmful drugs Which is so that were insane to me. the American population. The solution the American government came to was a zero tolerance policy on recreational drug use, including the prohibition of alcohol and the criminalization. A nigga was hit that opium and weed was legal. Like, you, you feel me, Bim? Do you feel me? That's, these nippers don't be knowing, you know, bro. Marijuana, which at the time they were spelling with an H. In 1971, President Nixon coined the term war on drugs where he declared drug abuse to be public enemy number one of the American people. The approach was incarceration with an iron fist. Possession, distribution, and consumption of banned substances would result in jail time. It's estimated that throughout this war on drugs, the USA spends roughly $51 billion annually on its endeavor to clean up the streets. 51 billion? Hold on. What? Substances would result in jail time. It's estimated that throughout this war on drugs, the USA spends roughly $51 billion annually on its endeavor to clean up the streets. To what illustrate do you with mean? that money, the USA could give each Canadian citizen $1,416. Like, this is what I be talking about, bro. What do America be doing, bro? We spending $51 billion on that, really? That's what you're telling me. $51 billion is going to that. Why? And 67 Please cents tell me per why. year just as a little it thank makes you no for sense. such lovely neighbors. Alternatively, they could give one lucky Canadian a dollar a minute for 97,032 years. A large amount of this campaign against drugs has involved a level of fear mongering. There's a lot of false information swirling around the world about the negative effects these drugs have. It rots the brain and causes psychosis. It's a gateway drug to strong. They still haven't done ski about it. Members being in prison for selling an ounce of goo like that. Is that not crazy? 10 years, bro? Like, is that not crazy? Bro. We, at that point, we worried about the wrong stuff. You feel me? We imprisoning people for 10 years for a green more dangerous like, highs. We also spending a hundred of billions on military. That too, bro. Ain't we, hold on. Ain't we like trillions of dollars in debt, bro? Like, we're cooked. Sid, your generation's done for, buddy. I, I hope you know that. You're you're done. <laughs> I thought my generation was cooked. You're 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 gone. Like you don't even got a chance, buddy. I'm gonna be honest with you. And it is highly addictive. But is there any truth to any of these claims? Let's examine them one by one. Firstly, no, marijuana does not rot the brain. Can we hold on? Let's run that back for the people in the back. Let's examine them one by one. Firstly, no, marijuana does not rot the brain. What did he say? Firstly, no, marijuana does not rot the brain. What is so hard to get about that, bro? Rotting is the decay of dead organic material as bacteria and fungi consume it. That simply doesn't happen. However, the link to psychosis is a much more contested field with evidence for both sides of the argument. Firstly, what is psychosis? 
It's a term that is thrown around a lot, especially in the world of drug use, but very rarely defined, meaning a lot of people attach their own fears, worries, and prejudices to the word. Psychosis. So we got people just loosely throwing around that word, basically, is what he's just saying. People just loosely throwing it. Oh this is when someone I hate society sometimes, reality. bro. I'll put that the on my soul. The I hate society that sometimes. The brain's painting doesn't match up with the objective reality surrounding them. The two main symptoms of psychosis I'm are hallucinations and delusions. It and it's to important me. to know the difference. I don't even know what two. that is. A hallucination is where is that a person at? experiences something that isn't actually happening. Most commonly, this takes the form of hearing voices that aren't really there or sometimes seeing things that aren't really there. In some cases, people have reported smelling, feeling, and tasting their hallucinations too, such as tasting blood in their mouth despite there being none. A delusion, on the other hand, is more Bro, abstract. Tasting dirty it metal could be the feeling mouth? that you're being followed or that there's a conspiracy in your workplace to harm you. Delusional people are often highly susceptible to conspiracy theories, as often the paranoid messaging chimes with their fearful delusions okay. that their minds have already but been generating. I think it should so be obvious these type of people shouldn't be doing drugs. Smoking a bogey or smoking weed? I'm not gonna lie, what the hell is a bogey, nigga? I don't know what that is. I'm gonna say weed, though, for chat. But these type of people shouldn't even be smoking, bro. If you know this is your type of personality, why are you even smoking? Does marijuana cause psychosis? It's complicated. Let's go back to the chemicals active in your brain. We're gonna need to crack that skull open again. Sorry. THC is highly psychoactive. This is where the feeling of euphoria from being high comes from. While CBD can decrease the levels of panic and paranoia in the brain, it's often present in much smaller quantities than THC, mainly as many cannabis farms compete with one another to grow stronger and stronger strains. Couple that with the fact that there are hundreds of active compounds within the cannabis plant, and it goes back to our earlier point about this being a challenging area of study. Therefore, many scientists rely on quite broad studies, taking large sample sizes of drug users and non-drug users and comparing the development of their brains over time, looking most notably at teenagers and young people. What they found is there is often a link between heavy pot smoking and psychosis. There are cases of people living with schizophrenia and bipolar disorders where the heavy use of marijuana is linked to the onset of those symptoms. Then why are what they smoking? Proven, however, is that weed was the cause. Most scientists believe that weed can, in some cases, accelerate the development of underlying psychotic disorders. The brain is a very complex and delicate thing. If somebody has an underlying psychotic condition, then the consumption of drugs that alters not their state make of it mind better, and heightens it's activities not within make certain it sections of the brain. That's like, that's like giving a known crash out a switch and tell him don't shoot it or don't use it. But he's a known crash out with known bodies. You just gave him a new toy. That's basically what this is. You think he's not going to use it, buddy? Exacerbation of those symptoms. Schizophrenia is believed to affect one in three hundred people, while bipolar disorder affects one in one hundred. While these are out of a hundred people, there's one person that's bipolar every time. I definitely met a couple women that are bipolar. I'm gonna be real. Quite small percentages. They are not in. When gang trying to. 700 strands, you're gonna smoke a weak ass blunt, then hit the fuck hit, get, then get hit with a fucking nuke. <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? I'm not gonna lie, bro. Sid, would you tune in for that? With a strong ass blunt. I feel like that would be W, bro. I look, you wanna do it. 700 strands? Damn. I gotta come out there to Cali. I'm gonna be honest. I know that's where they got them strands at, too. I know, I know what the Cali folks be doing. Hell yeah, I do. Significant. THC does carry do, the risk. Actually, of Cali people do cocaine too, and I'm not with cocaine. I'm, not gonna lie. I'm only strictly weed, buddy. Triggering a psychotic episode if you're genetically predisposed to having a psychotic condition. The chances are very low and won't affect the majority of the population, but they are still there. Next, is it a gateway drug? The experience of a chemical buzz seven. in the brain is a. 700 followers do it yo hold on let me actually write that down that's amazing that's a w idea bro that's a gas idea let me write that down so i don't forget bro sid help me come up with something to do for 100 um subscribers on youtube bro i'm trying to go crazy but i don't have nothing no i literally have zero ideas for something what to do
I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna be able to get through 700 strands in one sitting, though, bro. That's insane. My fault for the background music, y'all. It's just, I live with blacks. That's, 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 that's all it is. That's enough said. Sensation that many of us try to chase in our lives. You get up and sing in a concert at your high school and you get a rush from it. You do it a second time and the high is worn off a bit. So you need a bigger crowd and a bigger crowd and suddenly- Do it over seven strings? Tour, chase that would be a hundred strands a stream, which is still crazy. Brother, one bow be doing it for the yo, no cap Joe. That's still the gooest I've ever been in my life, bro. No cap. And it was like what three bowls? We're cooked. <laughs> I'm gonna say it right now, we're getting cooked. Oh my we're not making it a hundred strands, but we're getting cooked, fam. Using this type of bigger, better high is an experience we're sure many of you are familiar with. Studies have shown that in a minority of cases, the same can happen with marijuana. Usage of the drug can prime the brain, ready for more intense highs, which it then craves. This sounds bad until you realize the same thing happens with cigarettes and alcohol. What did he say? Let's run it back one more time for the people in the back. Which it then craves. This sounds bad until you realize the same thing happens with cigarettes and alcohol. Both of these demonstrate a similar connection to being a gateway drug to harder substances as marijuana. So why are those not held up to the same level of scrutiny? Please explain it. Bro, the whole bus can hardly get through five blicks. Y'all gonna start seeing more in y'all dreams. We'll be cooked, fam. We're getting destroyed, bro. I'm not gonna lie. That's something we're gonna have to do like periodically over time. And then at the end, when we finish 700, that's when like we, Piece it up, it's like a big documentary. Come on, I got the content brain. But yeah, we wouldn't be a hundred strands in one stream is crazy, bro. We're not getting to, uh, bro, that was like a, bro, that's a hundred blicks, bro. Who's, go, who's going through a hundred blicks in a day? Nobody, this nobody, genuinely. There's a much more powerful gateway drug out there, trauma. A difficult childhood, experiencing abuse. Whoa, whoa, he just spit. That's deep. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna let him cook, I'm gonna let him cook. It's I talked to him. up to the same level of scrutiny. One thing studies have shown is that- Put them in a tier list. Yo, Sid, you're cooking. That there is a much more powerful gateway drug Sid just cooked. Trauma, a difficult childhood, experiencing abuse, and going through acute pain and suffering are all far more likely to result in a person developing a dependence on hard substances. Weed is often a part of that journey, but in these cases, it seems to be a symptom more than the cause of the problem. But is it addictive? Let's take a similar look at this question. I'm about to say yes. You wake up one morning feeling tired, so you make yourself a cup of coffee. It clears away the fog, helps you focus on your job, and gives you a little endorphin I'm gonna rush say from yes. a good day. It is work. addictive. I'm so the next real. day, you do the same, and the next, and the next, until one day you run out of coffee. You look in the jar and it's empty. A storm cloud gathers over your head. You go to work with a scowl, snap at your coworkers, have a headache by lunchtime, and come home feeling miserable. What's happened here? Well, the human brain is incredibly flexible. Damn, that was dead ass me at work with no Tim. I kid you not. Joe, I put that on my life. That was me. But hey, we two months no Tim. Hmm, talk to me. Hmm, talk to me. Your brain has gotten so used to the influx of caffeine each day that it's now rebalanced the chemicals inside itself to receive that caffeine boost. It's ready and it's waiting. So when the boost doesn't come, there's now a chemical imbalance. The same thing happens with weed. If you burn one down at 420, smoke weed every day, your brain's gonna be sitting there at 419, rubbing its metaphorical hands together in anticipation. Coming off weed now feels hard. You have cravings for it. You feel irritated when you don't have it. You struggle to fall asleep you lose your appetite and you generally have a bad time for about two weeks. Then you're likely back to normal. And that's because that's a spit, bro. Literally the hardest thing was like, I'd say stopping the Tim, like maybe for like a week, like no Tim for a week. And I was getting calls back to back to back at the co-op. I was going through it, fam. I'm gonna be honest. I was, 
spray the punch monitors and stuff. I was, I was going through it, man. But after that week, I was good on God. I never thought about it again. What we've described I kid here you not. isn't an addiction, it's dependence. It's very common. Yo, I'm not gonna lie, hold on. I love this channel. I'm already subscribed. Buddy, this is a like and, hold on, this is a like and comment. I hope I spelled that right. That's, what is, what? Great informational. Am I slow? Skinny fuck, mixing up the turkeys got me lifted up. Quick and bust, you better pack your bags before you sit with us.